Hi guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're in the best of health. I hope you're drinking water and minding your business. If you're new to my channel, my name is Any Any Paul, and it's so very nice to meet you. I make content on student advice, medicine, lifestyle, and natural hair. If you are returning, you guys totally rock, and I appreciate each and every one of you. All right. So in today's video, we're just gonna be talking about the MDCN exams. What are these exams? What do they entail? How do you score high? How do you even pass? Okay, if these are things that you like to know, please keep on watching. So the MDCN exams are basically, the full meaning of MDCN, okay, is the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. So the MDCN exams are the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria licensing exams, okay, and these are to be taken by international medical graduates who have finished from another country and want to work in Nigeria, okay. So now, what does this exam entail? It's actually a two-day exam and you have it's in two parts so it's a two-day thing you're gonna on the first day you're going to do what we call the cbts and cbts are basically the computer-based tests so think of them as mcqs and <laughs> you have to answer 300 questions 300 mcq questions in three hours okay so at that gives you roughly how many seconds per question i can't really do that much right now but yeah that's actually what is required of you in day one and um the thing is there's no rest for these three hours there's no breaks in between yes maybe you can take excuse go and ease yourself come back and be searched again and you know all of these things your time is still going to be counting so there's no way to pause it at least not that i know of okay so um and then for the day two the day two entails what we call the oskis and oskis are like you know objective structured clinical examinations and um in nigeria i know we call them vivas so here you might be speaking to an invigilator one-on-one -on -one. you might have a simulated station you might be speaking to a patient examining a patient counseling or um, clerking a patient whatever that you know gives and the thing with the oski part of this exam is you do not know what will come out okay you have their like standard things that usually will come out and for standard things i mean things like you most likely will get a clerking station you most likely will get a counseling station you most likely will get a station with levels of prevention so that's already three stations okay you most likely will get a station on your um symptom analysis so i know in previous times like in previous years there used to be one rest station and right now that's not the case okay so you would literally have now you already have four things out of 10 stations because you're going to have 10 stations okay so you're going to have now I've, I've said four things out of those 10 stations that you most likely will encounter now it's left to how the examiners structure the exam to you know distribute it you might have two clerking stations two counseling stations two levels of prevention stations one symptom analysis that kind of thing okay another thing that usually comes out is for you to interpret lab results so you might get something like an ecg you might get something you might get a picture test even okay so if you don't get in lab analysis and you're looking at maybe viral markers for someone who has something like hepatitis you might get something um a picture test like a chest x-ray to for you to like speak about this and what 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 i know there was a year that i that i had heard they got the pathograph and the whole station was just that pathograph so they had about five to ten questions under that one pathograph so sometimes it's usually very unexpected like that but yeah um it is what it is Another thing that usually comes out in the OSCE part of this exam is for you to identify instruments and speak more about them. So you might get instruments as regular as your, you know, they're actually usually regular instruments. It's just because of the amount of instruments you will have had to go through before you prep for this exam, there's going to be like 1 million instruments in your head. And I'm not even exaggerating. So you, you're you going to get something like a urinary catheter, or you know a speculum and then you have to identify the type what kind of speculum are you seeing um and they usually are very um 
peculiar about having the full name of whatever you see so what size is this catheter or what type of catheter is this is it self-retaining is it not so they expect a very they expect a very detailed answer in this case and it's kind of tricky because you might get examiners that might um prompt you like oh yeah you're in the right direction like continue and you might get examiners that are just like quiet sitting listening to you and you're wondering am i babbling or am i saying the right things so yeah it usually gets like that sometimes um for the 10 stations you're gonna be rotating you're going to spend five minutes per station so in total you have about 50 minutes to an hour to be there and you're going to be there in a 10-man station so it's going to be like a carousel and you rotate around do you understand yes so it's like you're done with station one you go to station two immediately you're done with station two you go to station three immediately okay that's usually how this exam looks like some of the you know downsides to this exam is it's easy to carry your emotions around with you so it's easy to carry how you felt from your supposed performance in the cbt and as of the time of filming this video it's not like you can see any of your cbt or oski scores so maybe you just like speak about what options you choose with your friends and they're like oh no it's not a it's b and you're like oh my goodness like i botched that and you've botched like 20 questions out of 300 questions they're like you already have this um down downness or like you're already put down by your answers by your choices that you're like all right let's just drag ourselves to the oski day or it's easy to also carry the emotion from one station into another be like oh my goodness what did i even perform in station one and in station two you're just beating yourself up on how you performed in station one and it's just going to usually is bad to do that because it most likely will follow you around and you might not get yourself in time to get all the marks you need from each station to actually pass this exam okay um as at the time of also shooting this video it's not like you can see your overall scores or your cumulative scores so it's difficult to say where you did poorly in and where you need to work on it's difficult to evaluate yourself that's the word so what i'm going to advise is while you're practicing while you're studying look out for the places where you have almost no idea or the places that make you have to restart your practice all over again or make you have to study again or stations that easily confuse you do you understand so you can um know where to put all of your energy into in terms of studying now another thing that um, I'm going to see at this point apart from Knowing where to put all your energy in terms of studying is to join a tutorial Join it. You need to join a tutorial that will help you Give you some direction in terms of how to study for these exams and what to study for these exams. It's sad that um, some <laughs> the major issue you face writing this exam is the way Nigerian questions are structured are kind of different from what you most likely will be used to abroad so abroad they ask you a specific question and say oh what would be your best next step or what would be your best next management for this patient but in nigeria is maybe you have like a case and there's no there's nothing so you literally have to figure out what are they asking you what's the management or are they asking you what's the diagnosis or are they asking you what's complication you try to prevent in this situation so it's usually like so for this problem i think i'm just going to advise that you go through a lot of mcq questions because honestly nothing can totally prepare you for the kind of questions that you're going to meet on that day and i feel like that's one of the um mindsets that i had initially that if i read hard enough like read my books hard enough and i knew enough theory i would be able to go like past the mcq stage without any problems so i think you need to no enough theory yes quite all right but you also need to practice enough mcq questions so that with what you know you can you know tackle the kind of questions or the yeah like decipher what they need you to get in that station i'm sorry guys my lighting is actually all over the place right now but yeah so anyways um 
not like we don't have a scoring system per se but we don't get to see our scores so you don't see your scores for both the cbt and the oskies okay so how you know you've passed is usually a day after or i don't know how that time frame is really shared or how many hours after that the results are usually released but you know something like you write your cbt on monday you write your oskies on tuesday and your exam results come out on wednesday that kind of you know arrangement now how the results come out is there's literally a sheet that anyone can download whether or not you registered to write this exam so so people download the sheets and you look through for your name and it's literally you see your name you see your number and you see pass that's that's literally how to know if you've passed this exam and honestly anyone can download the results so people can be all up in your business and be checking your name for you that's one of the downsides to this exam another downside is you don't see your scores so you don't know how it's shared you don't know if you did your best in ONG and you have you know to work or buckle up more in medicine those are things that you're going to have to do for yourself by yourself so scoring high in MDCN is not necessarily a thing it's more like you need to pass this exam okay like and at this point i just want to encourage you if you're studying for this exam if you've taken the exam before and you want to take it again if you've heard so many wild things about the exam and you know you have already doubts second thoughts or things like that at this point i'm just going to encourage you that it is doable there are a lot of things that look like they're against you but it is doable i want you to have a can-do mentality i want you to have and I can do this mindset. I want you to surround yourself with positive energy, with prayers, with people that can push you and study and pray with you, with people that you can call if you have questions, if you have doubts, with people that, you know, can just put some ginger in your body because honestly, this exam can mess with you. And if you really have been through med school and you failed an exam in school before, you know how it usually is. Yeah, this exam usually gives double of that okay so guys um i hope this was able to kind of give you context on what the exam looks like help you you know get ready and crush the thing once and for all so guys um if you enjoyed this video please give this video a thumbs up and write in the comment section if you have any questions what parts of the video you enjoyed the most and most likely we'll see you in the next one peace and lots